Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool, and in this video we're having a look at how we can duplicate an object in a circular pattern. So in this video we're going to have a look at as many ways as I can think of of duplicating in a circular pattern. Now there's not going to be a thousand and one ways obviously, it's just pointing out that there's a lot of different ways to do most things in Blender, and this is one of those examples where you can do it in a huge number of different ways. Now, I'm probably going to miss some out during the course of this, so if I do, please feel free to say so in the comments section. I either don't know it or I've forgotten it. And we'll cover some things that we can do with add-ons and without. And whenever I'm using an add-on, I'll mention that really clearly. So we've got our quarter of an object, and we want to turn this into a full circle that is duplicating what we've created here. Let's just Shift and D and make a few different versions of that so that we've got loads to go off. I might need some more or some less, and we'll start with our first method. So, our first couple of methods are kind of cheating, but I think they're worth mentioning, because depending on what you're doing, it's something you potentially might be able to use. This only works because this is a quarter of a shape. If this was like an eighth, this wouldn't work. But if I come to the modifier panel and type in mirror, we can use a mirror modifier. Your modifier panel will look slightly different to this, but all of the options are the same. I'm using a free add-on for this that's from Blender's Extension Warehouse. I'll put a link in the description to a video on that. I think it's really cool and looks much better. But anyway, we've just mirrored across the X, which goes across the origin, and then we can do the same for the Y, and we've got this in a circular pattern. So again, this is only gonna work with a half or a quarter shape, but I thought it was worth mentioning. And there's a really big positive of this because this is a copy of, well, a mirror of the original, and they're all still linked together. If I just G and Z this up, you can see it is gonna modify it on all of the other sections as well. Now, all of the methods we're gonna cover will do that. Now, just to mention, there are some paid for add-ons that will do this for you. The first is hard ops. If I just press Alt and X, I can then get this gizmo and it allows me to mirror in the different axes. Now I want to do this in two, so I'm gonna hold down shift and mirror across the X, and then not hold down shift and mirror across the Y, and that will do the second one and confirm it. And you can see here, we've got both of those on the modifier panel. So that was hard ops. Another paid for add-on that will do this is Machine Tools. Machine Tools is much cheaper than Hard Ops. It's only $5 at the time of recording this. And this does this in a slightly different way. We just hold Shift, Alt, and X. And then we get this icon we can drag across, drag to the side, so we want it in the X. And I can either come down to the bottom left-hand corner. If you haven't got this, just click this open. And so I also want this on the Y, and that will do it as the same modifier. Or I could Shift, Alt, and X, and drag there, Shift, Alt, and X, and drag there. And it's done that as two separate mirror modifiers. So both are quicker and I prefer setting them up and they have some other options that are also faster than just using the standard version. And as I said, in this instance, it's not really doing a circular distribution pattern, but it works in this quartered section. Now from this point on, these are not cheating. This will work for any shape where you need to do multiples of it, even if it wasn't a quarter, it was say an eighth. So what we're gonna start with is just duplicating. If I press Shift and D to duplicate, we've got our copy, and if I hit R, straight away we can be rotating around. Now in this instance, because I'm not looking top down, I need to hit the Z so that it's now rotating in the Z axis, and you can see what we're doing here. So what I'm gonna do is just type in the rotation I want. You can see that in the top left-hand corner, so I'm gonna type in 90, because that's what I want. Hit Enter, and then I'm gonna press Shift and R, and then Shift and R, and that repeats our last use function. Now this has the big problem that all of these are separated, which isn't necessarily an issue, but they're not linked together. So if I select these vertices and G and Z those up, it's only changing one of them, not all of them. Now that might be what you want, but it might not be. So the other option for doing this is if you instead of press Shift and D, press Alt and D, you're doing a duplicate. This time it's a linked duplicate. We're gonna do the same thing, R and Z, type in 90, hit enter, shift and R, shift and R, and this has created linked duplicates. So they are all linked together. Now in this instance, if I go to vertex mode and select those and G and set them up, all of them will change because they are all linked. So there is a way of getting around this, but they are all still separate objects. You might need to Boolean these all together to get one single object, but definitely some handy options to have. The other option that we're gonna cover for the next three, because there's again some add-on versions of this, is to array this around another object. Now for this we need another object, so I'm just gonna shift and S to bring my cursor to this object. Your shift and S options will look slightly different than that if you don't have machine tools, 
But either way, bring your cursor to the origin or at least to the center point that you want to rotate around. Shift and A, and then we'll bring in, I mean, this can be any object, but I'm gonna bring in an empty, just so it's really obvious. And then all we're gonna do is click here, come to our modifier, type in array, and then we've got an array. Now, normally this works, again, yours will look slightly different to this, but the options are all the same. It's just laid out more nicely in this add-on. Normally we have the option of just moving how much we want, either relative or constant. I'm gonna turn that off, click object offset, and we need to select our object. So use the pipette, select the empty, and it looks like we haven't done anything because at the moment the empty is at the same place as our object. But if I press G, and start moving the empty around, notice I'm moving the empty, not the object, you can see we've got a copy of this and it's being copied to exactly where the empty is. Now this doesn't seem very useful, except for now if we come to this and start upping our count, you'll see that it makes a duplicate with exactly the same offset every single time. So this can be really handy. Let's just undo that and we'll come back to the point where we're here. So now if instead of moving the object, we hit R, so notice I've still got the empty selected, we're making a duplicate, but in a rotated fashion. So I can just hit in 90, you might need more or less than 90, depending on how much of your section you've got. Enter to get that sorted, and we've rotated that and we get our copies. Now if I come to the original and we just up our count on our array, so I'll get another one and then another one, we can do this as many times as we need to fill out our circle. Now I haven't done it here, but you might want to hit the merge option as well, which will bring all these vertices together where they have an overlap on the scenes. I'll give you a sort of demonstration of that and why that can be an issue later with one of the other methods. Now, as I said, there are other ways of doing this. That is the free version. There is also another free version, which is called ND. You'll just need to go to edit, preferences, come to get extensions, type in ND, and then you've got ND here, not this ND primitives, that's different. So just ND here, click install, and then you'll have this as an option. And all you do for this is press shift and two, and then you can select to replicate and in a circular array. Now this will try to offset everything. So we don't want this offset. So at the moment we're doing two versions. I can move to get more versions, but they're offset from our central point. So we need to change the offset. I'm gonna hold control until we get to the point where this is basically zero. And then when it's close enough to zero, I'm gonna hold down shift at the same time, which allows me to do smaller increments and makes it easier to be exact. So once we've done that, fingers off control and shift, and I can just scroll up to change the count. And if you hold down shift, you can scroll up in ones instead of twos. So for example, there's three and there's four. You scroll up as many as you need and then hit space when you're done and you've got that, and it's doing exactly the same thing, but in a different way. So that version's free. There's also a version of this with hard ops. Hard ops is paid for. Here you just press Q, mesh tools, then we want a radial array, and it's done exactly the same thing. We still get this potential for offset, but I want this to be zero, so I'm just gonna bring this down to zero, hold down shift to be more precise. And then we can scroll up and down to change the number we've got. So we've got two, three, Four. that's the number we need, click, and we've done that as well. Now, in both of these instances, if I just go into X-ray mode, we can see this. This is actually just created an empty. So the hard ops one keeps the empty visible, so we can still see this. And if we want to, we can just hide it if we don't want it, so just hit H. In the version from ND, we can't see this. If we scroll down, we get this utils bit, and we get this ND for the circular array, and click that, and it will bring back the empty, and then we can hide that again if we want. So three different versions of a circular array. Again, all of these are non-destructive, and if we go into vertex mode, you can see it will get rid of everything else. If you want to be able to see it at the same time, just click that button here in the modifier panel, and then G and Z that up, and it's affecting all the other parts that have been arrayed, because they are all linked to this first one. So the last method I want to mention, oh, I've got exactly the right number of them. How many have we got? Nine. There we go. So nine different methods. For the last version, we're going to do something destructive. And this is going to be a little bit different to the others and a tool that you might not have used before. People always seem to forget that this exists or don't know. Again, we need the cursor at this object. So Shift and S, cursor to select it because this works around the 3D cursor. I'm also going to press T over here to bring up the T panel and we're gonna go into vertex mode. We're gonna use the spin tool, which is there, 
And at the top, it asks which axis we want to do this in. I want to do this in the Z axis. Now we also have an option here to use duplicates, which is what we're gonna do, but we also have an option to do that later on. So we'll just show what this does normally. So normally, if I just press A and select everything, this sort of makes multiple copies of this in this weird spinny thing. It's really useful to use. Again, I've got some videos using that. I'll put a link in the description, but this looks like an absolute mess until we hit use duplicates. Now it's just making copies of this. Let's go to one or two. You can see that we've got one or two copies of this or three and they start overlapping, which we don't want. Now we want to go all the way around. Now that would normally be 360 degrees, but we've got this already having 90 degrees taken up. So we want 270 degrees, so 360 minus 90. So just there, do note, you could here type in 360 minus 90 if you can't be bothered to do the maths in your own head and it works it out. And then we can up our duplicates to, well, in this instance, that would be one, that's two, and that's three. And notice here, we want three duplicates because we're getting three copies. Now, this is destructive. So now that we've got this done, this is a destructive method. We've got all the vertices here. So if I change one of them, it's not gonna change the others. So that's the first thing to note. Now, the problem with this, if we just have a look at this vertex here, is that at the seams, so if we imagine this was the seam there for a quarter of it, if I select one of the vertices there and press G, you can see they're not actually connected together. And that's a little bit of a problem, or can be, depending on what we want to do with this. All we need to do is press A, M, and then merge by distance, and that's gonna have removed, well here we can see 22 vertices, and now if I do the same thing, they're all there. So there we go. Nine different methods, well sort of nine, the first three were cheating. So six or nine, depending on the way you look at it, versions of creating duplicates in a circular pattern. As I said, if there's any methods that I've missed out here or anything else you want to add to this, please do say in the comment section. It's great for us to all be able to learn off of each other. If you found that helpful, I'd appreciate you hitting the like button to spread this around. And if you found this video because you were looking for a specific solution to an issue you're having, hopefully this is giving you some options to pick from. Have a great day, guys.